Hello and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today on the uh, video we're going to do a part two to uh, a part one that is done with the title Not by Might uh, nor by Power but by My Spirit says the Lord. We've already done uh, video one and took a look at what the Lord has to say regarding his spirit moving and operating instead of the power of man instead of the might of man or the actual number of men to be involved in any type of war uh, because of the fact that God wants to get glory himself we want to make sure we're glorifying him and therefore sometimes he will even make the process of that nature so that he alone can be known as the one who made it happen who did it who showed up who showed out and it was by his spirit that whatever it is that needs to be done, it was done. So we're looking at today a story in the book of Judges. And it is a story by an individual named Gideon, where he was uh, among the children of Israel and they had began to go into idol worship. And um, they were placed into bondage by the Midianites. Now this story is from chapter 6 all the way to chapter 10 because he leaves uh, in chapter 10 he passes away and that's the conclusion of that story before we get to chapter 10 actually it's in chapter uh, is it chapter 10 yeah it ends in chapter 9 so here we are uh, in the book of Judges and we're going to start with chapter 6. I'm not going to read all the way through. I'm going to skip around just to bring about the point that the Heavenly Father wants us to receive the revelation regarding His Spirit moving and operating in a particular situation maybe that you have or operating in your life. You know, a lot of times God, if He has anointed you, He definitely wants to get the glory from your life uh, through by His Spirit operating in your life and doing whatever it is that uh, needs to be done <clears throat> so we start here with chapter 6 in the book of Judges and I'm just going to start with uh, chapter 10 to go into everything it says I said unto you I am the Lord your God fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell but you have not obeyed my voice so see the children of Israel had, no obeyed, had not obeyed God's voice and so they had began to go into worshiping the God that the Amorites worshipped and the Midianites of the land at that particular time. So then it says here in verse 11, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak tree, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abizarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So here we have Gideon who is threshing wheat and uh, to hide it from the Midianites. And it says, The angel of the Lord appeared unto him, unto Gideon, and said unto him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty and man of valor. Okay? So then he says, And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is uh, all this happening? You know, how is it that they ended up in bondage and um, worshiping the God of the Midianites? And he says, And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So he's questioning, you know, where is the Lord if this is, you know, the Lord is with me, the Lord is with us. Why are we in bondage with the Midianites? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have not I sent you, okay, and he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel, behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in, the, in my father's house, so he begins to uh, doubt himself in the presence of where he came from and everything, but of course, um, going on, skipping verses here in verse 19, he it says, And Gideon went in, and he made ready a kid, and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. Okay, so he did this because he wanted the Lord to basically confirm that this was him telling him that he was going to win the victory over the Midianites. 
And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. And then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord left from out of his sight. And from this happening, with the angel of the Lord, the presence of the Lord coming in, this confirmed him. He says here in verse 22, And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto you, fear not, for thou shalt not die. Now because God confirmed his word, what he had told him regarding the victory over the Midianites, <clears throat> he had confirmed everything. So the man Gideon, he built an altar unto the Lord right there and then. Okay, so then it goes on to say that uh, he did go forward afterwards and he killed all of the uh, altars that were made by the Midianites where they actually worshipped Baal, their God, and then the children of Israel began to worship. So Gideon did kill those, uh, or knock down, tear down those altars. And then uh, it goes into, uh, let's see, verse 34. And we're still in chapter 6. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abizar was gathered after him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Ashar, and unto Zebulon, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. <clears throat> Then Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and if it be dry upon the earth beside them, shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. Now notice how he says, by my hand, if thou wilt save Israel, because he knows it is the Spirit of the Lord that is going to do it, but he's going to use Gideon to do it. And just because he has to, you know, he's using him to come forward and be the leader over the battle at that particular point in time he was sent to do that okay so then he's asking for confirmation again from the Lord after he already threw down the altars of, <clears throat> of the Midianites which was Baal that was one victory he had over the altars and then verse 39 says Gideon said unto God let not thine anger be hot against me and I will speak but this once, so let me prove, I pray, but this once with the fleece, let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. So therefore Jeroboam, who was Gideon, his name was also named Gideon, and all the people that were with him, they rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad, so that the hosts of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill, so they got ready to get go forward with the fight, okay, against the Midianites. After God confirmed that yes, Gideon would be the one that he would use to initiate to be the leader over the children of Israel when they got ready to go into battle, but the battle was going to be won by the Lord. And so this verse here, we're getting ready to go into into chapter we are in chapter seven, and we're going to read verse two. And this signifies the fact that the Lord is saying that he's going to get the victory, not by might and not by power, but by his spirit. He says here in verse 2, The Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. So now this is what God is saying regarding those of Israel, those in the children of Israel. He has too many people, he says. And he says, I want you to get rid of them. He says, unless Israel vaunts themselves against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. So he wants he wants uh, Gideon to let some of the people go, that are some of the children of Israel go. And God is saying, so now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 22,000, and there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. It was still too many, okay? Because God was saying he didn't need this many. He didn't need that much might or much power, but it was going to be the victory done through the power of his spirit, through Gideon, 
see the leadership of him using Gideon. And God was going to get the glory because, again, as he said here in verse 2, he didn't want them to vaunt up themselves saying, oh, well, we got victory over the Midianites. We did this and we did that. So going back here to verse 4, the Lord said to Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water and I'll try them for the, for them there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto you, this shall go with thee. The same shall go with you and whosoever I say unto you, those are the ones that shall go. So he took the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Every one that laps of the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, him shalt thou set by himself. So likewise, every one that bowed down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. So he decreased, he decreased an army from first twenty-two thousand men, and there remained ten thousand. So we see that there was, what, 32,000? He decreased them from 32,000 all the way down to 300 men that lacked, will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So therefore, God showed Gideon that it wasn't about how many people you have in your army, it, and it's not about the power that you have with your army. But it is by the Spirit of the Lord that the power, uh, the victory will be won. And he showed him that here in this particular chapter, by decreasing the men that he had that was with him in the army. And let's see, as we begin to go, and it came to pass here, verse 9 says, It came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get up, get down into the host, for I have delivered, delivered it into thy hand. Okay, so here we see the Lord woke up Gideon and told him to arise, that he had delivered basically the enemies into his hand. He said, But if thou wilt fear to go down, go thou with uh, Farah thy servant down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down into the host. And so he did, as the Lord has said, and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for the multi for multitude and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside of the multitude and when Gideon was come behold there was a man that told a dream okay so now he meets this man who's telling him of a dream that he had because again all of this is being done by the spirit of the Lord first the Lord confirmed to Gideon through the spirit that he was telling him to go forward to fight and battle and now he's meeting a man that had a dream and this man is going to give him uh, what thus says the Lord to him in the dream about the victory that he's going to have also so the man says Gideon was come behold there was a man that told him uh, he had a dream and he said behold I have dreamed a dream and a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay alone okay so there that was the actual confirmation again through the power of the spirit because this man had this dream where the Lord spoke to him in the dream and showed him that this barley of bread was going to actually be uh, Gideon going through the host of Midian the Midianites and getting victory so it says here in verse 14, And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand has God delivered Midian and all the hosts of the Midianites. Okay? So it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation of it, that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of the Midian the Midianites okay so there we see the victory was won through by the spirit and God gave continually he confirmed everything that he had originally told Gideon at the beginning that yes he is the one that was chosen to go forward he was sent to do uh, to be the leader over the army and to get victory over the Midianites and the Amalekites and he continually confirmed it. Then he gave a dream and the interpretation of the dream signifying that it would be, in fact, Gideon who would get the victory. 
And let's see, let's go over to chapter 8 and look at what he says here, verse 22. It says, Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Because he had ruled and because he had got the victory for them, they wanted him to be his, uh, to be their leader. He says, this is what they said. The men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule thou over us, both you and thy son, and thy son's son also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. So see, they recognized that Gideon was the one that God used in leadership to deliver them from the Midianites. And Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you, but the Lord shall rule over you. So he also recognized that it was the spirit of the Lord that led him into battle and that led him to victory for the victory over the Midianites at that particular time for the children of Israel. As the Heavenly Father decrees and declared, not by might. So it didn't have to be a lot of people in the army, not by power. It didn't have to be them operating in their own power, but it was signified and it was done through by the Spirit of the Lord, bringing victory to the children of Israel um, over the Midianites. So Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, to anyone that comes on this video, Heavenly Father, we pray and ask you in the mighty name of Christ Jesus that you would give us victory, continue to give us victory, as you have decreed and declared out of your word, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, you have said, and that way you will get the glory over our lives, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. All right, so God bless you, and I will see you as we continue, I'll see you in the next video. As we continue to go forward here on the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.